What will most certainly be, I, I think, an absolute truth in the upcoming future is going to be the inadequacy and the, um, I guess, the anachronism of political parties. What we're dealing with right now has something to do with classic DNC, GOP, um, Kennedy, FDR versus, um, you know, Roosevelt Republicans or anything that has any kind of, of hyphen, any kind of descriptive. Americans today don't care about Democrats and Republicans. That's not it. It's about issues. It's about vectors. It's about big, big issues. That's what defines us. People might say, oh, yeah, I guess, yeah, Biden, he's Democrat, Trump, he's a Republican. But that's not what we're talking about today. Because the definition of politics today is that of policy, not specifics. Do you believe, does anyone believe in the notion of a Democratic leadership, of a Republican leadership? I say no. That is anachronistic. I'm going to explain that. I'm going to explain to you, in a sense, the, the pulse. Think of it almost as an electromagnetic pulse of common sense and how appropriate that segue is as we turn first to our sponsor. If you're like me and any rational person and you love freedom, then it's time for you to wake up. With the state the world is in right now, the threat of an electromagnetic pulse has never been more real. An EMP would destroy all the electronics that we depend on in today's society. It will completely change our world as we know it, and only you can protect yourself and your loved ones. How? Well, I have recently partnered with a veteran-owned company out of the Midwest called EMP Shield. They've invented a device that can hook up to your vehicle or home that will protect against the threat of an EMP. This technology has undergone testing at Keystone Compliance, a military-certified facility, and is listed by the Department of Homeland Security. This company has devices that can protect not just your vehicle and home, but your generator, solar system, ham radio, RV, and much more. Take your family's safety and security into your own hands by going to the URL linked right here and go there now, today. It could be the difference between life and death. With EMP Shield, you'll not only protect yourself, but also this great nation. I can only speak for me when I tell you that political parties mean nothing. I don't even know what that, I, I don't understand this. In 1856 or so, don't hold me to it, I just thought of it right now. In Philadelphia was the first Republican uh, convention and it dealt with specifically the twin pillars of barbarism. It was, it was the, it was the, the idea of slavery and um, polygamy. At, at the time, uh, Mormonism was a quite, quite a, quite, quite the subject of concern for many, many people. But it was slavery. The Republican Party, and you can say, well, that was the party of Lincoln. And we can also go back and say, well, you know what's funny? They're really the slaves in the Klan that was really Democrats and and uh, the people who fought against uh, the notion of of Reconstruction were Democrats. All, all that's moved. You want to talk about Whigs and Tories and Bull Moosers next? Libertarians? These names mean nothing. Even conservative and liberal. What does that even mean? What is that? This may, to you, surprise you. But the same thing happened when we tried years ago to define country music or jazz. We gave it all these pithy names, these cute names, you know, whether it's smooth jazz or cool jazz or West Coast jazz or bebop. Okay, fine. Great. It's jazz. It's music. It's a waste of time. Just listen to it. you like it? Yeah, it doesn't matter what it's called. What we're looking at right now is a bigger picture. And we're also looking at how 
how little, in essence, politics and government has in providing the impetus or the background or the the oomph when it comes to changing major um, political structures in this country. Now, what all this gibberish means is simply this. If you're going to try to run for office in the 21st century, you're going to have to be able to tell people what you want to accomplish. Not because if it's not because of a party. It, it, it doesn't mean anything. And frankly, it never did then. You and I have basic core values. Values and beliefs that may transcend, that may bleed into the political spectrum. And what we believe has nothing to do with what anybody else says. Can you think of anybody seriously? Maybe you can't. Maybe you can't. I can't speak for you. But I can't think of anybody who absolutely mirrors my ideology or what I believe in. There are some things that I believe that I wish would change, but I don't think the government has any jurisdiction in it. The things that really affects me, I think affects most of us, are what happens culturally, what happens in terms of our our world view, what happens in terms of our day-to-day existence and the like. A lot of it has nothing really to do with government, with with some policy, where we're heading. When you try to take that and add the notion of constitutional protections and limitations, it gets even more hard to understand. So many things that are occurring right now, so many things that, that, are, that are actually coming up in the news has absolutely nothing to do with the Constitution. The Constitution doesn't provide for it. It doesn't negate it. It doesn't prevent it. It doesn't do anything. And you can talk about things like flag and family, and you can use words like diversity and equality. And, uh, it, but what, what does it really mean? I have no idea. What it comes down to is simply this. Number one, what role does government play? What role does government play? Are there any things that are out of bounds? Classic prototypical Reagan-esque uh, paleoconservatism had government really doing virtually nothing. I mean, playing virtually no role in almost anything except the essentials, you know, defense and administrative stuff and what have you. But you've got to ask yourself, what do you feel okay with? And the hardest part, the hardest part is when people say that's unconstitutional. You know, one of the things that came up this recently this past week is is the Defense of Marriage Act. And some might have suggested that it was a waste of time or it was redundant or unnecessary. But you know what? It's not unconstitutional because that's precisely what you should be doing. If you believe in something that is not specifically prohibited by the Constitution, pass a law. There's no such thing as you passing a law or having it be void for redundancy or because it's not necessary. These are critical aspects, critical things, critical parts of our world right now. You've got to ask yourself how the Constitution doesn't really talk about half of this stuff. And this week there was such a brouhaha from some who identified themselves as conservative who said again, there's no need for this. What are you doing? We've already had this. Okay. Because what conservatives have said for the longest time, is, especially when it comes to the notion of reproductive rights and abortion, is that there is no constitutional protection, and if you believe it one way or another, pass a law. Go ahead and do it. States' rights. Okay. Well, people are doing it on a federal level, and that should please everybody. But to some... That doesn't, please. Because what really is the bottom line, what really fuels right now the debate is enmity, hatred between sides, this bickering, this trolling behavior. That's the biggest problem. Each side thinks of the other in the most, well, pejorative of terms. And I can, you know, the left thinks the right is stodgy and old-fashioned and oshios or racist or whatever, and the right thinks that the left is out of their mind and woke. And by the way, the word woke has been used with, with such repetition and with such frequency that whatever whatever it, it, it intended to uh, convey at first, I think it's been long lost 
in this entire, you know, confluence of opinion. But, but in the meantime, as we get done with this bickering and we stop, we say, wait a minute, is this about party? No. Is this about politics? No. Well, what is this about? It's about something very, very simple. It's about this natural antagonism that human beings have. We love to pick fights. And we love to have our own particular ideology defined not by what we think, but what by other people say we think. It's almost like you're saying, you know, I really wasn't um, one way or another regarding this subject until that guy told me I was wrong. Now I'm in. Ask yourself this question. Can you really define your ideology, what you believe, what you feel, or does your existence depend upon, or is it based upon the opposite of what somebody else thinks? I say that's the case. I say sometimes we need the political antagonist, not just for the fun of the debate, but to define who we are and who we are not. Think about it. And what I ask you also is, and I know this has become a commonplace, please like this video. Put your thoughts and comments down. Subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to this. Hit that little bell, that little notification of live streams and new videos. And whatever you do, I beseech, entreat, and importune you to comment as you see fit.